EA Sports. It's in the game. Hi, everybody. This is Andy Agostini from the NHL uh, franchise here at EA Sports Canada. Just wanted to give everyone an update on our first roster update of the year. We are in the final stages of it. It is uh, complete as of my side of the work. We're now testing it, and it should be up any day now. Uh, but to that extent, I wanted to go over a couple things so that everyone can understand why certain players are in the roster update and why certain players are not. So I'll be going through uh, basically what we know are the rules of our licensing agreements with the NHLPA and the AHL's union, the PHPA. And that will let you uh, just have a good grasp of why a certain player isn't in the game uh, instead of uh, asking the question on the forums, which we see all the time, why a certain guy isn't there. And uh, this will just give a good overview of it. So I'll first start explaining by uh, talking about the NHLPA license. So the NHLPA, which is the union that all the players are in, the NHL, once they play one game, they have to step on NHL ice in a regular season game. So play one game. And they are officially a member of the union. And from there, we can place them in the game. Now, if a goalie is a backup for one game, he will also be in the uh, union. So they don't necessarily have to play. They just have to be dressed and on the bench for one game. So a player like Johan Backlund of the Philadelphia Flyers, he's been the backup the last three days or three games for um, Ray Emery, and I believe he was sent down today. But because he sat on the bench during an NHL game, he's also in the update, and he will now be there instead of having to wait for him to sign uh, a form. So a goalie, backup one game. So those are the two basic rules that we follow for the NHLPA. Uh, this also means that certain players like uh, uh, Tavares and uh, Matt Duchesne of the Colorado Avalanche, to get them in the game, we had to wait till they played. So this is why we don't do a roster update like day one of the season. We usually wait about a week. It lets all the rookies that are on the rosters play. If a player hasn't played, we just will leave them out for now. And from there, we will proceed next time we do a roster update. And this year, we're expecting to do more roster updates. We're aiming bi-weekly, so you should get one about every two weeks. And that will let you have uh, a much more systematic uh, implementation of all the new players as they come into the league. So that's our NHL one. That's the easiest one that we have. It's as simple as play one game, and a goalie has to back up one game. And they can go into the, into the video game. So... We've had a lot of questions about different players that are playing in the AHL or prospects that, that people want to see in their game, their friends, whatever it is. So for the AHL, they have a union called the PHPA. Oops, PHPA. This union doesn't work the same way as the NHL. The NHL, you play a game, you're in. For this one, they have to sign a licensing agreement. And that agreement will basically let them gives their rights to the league to be used in video games, hockey cards, and so forth. So every year, people notice that we wait a little bit to get a bunch of players in the AHL. So I'll, I'll let you know right now, there's about 180 players coming into the roster updates in the next couple months. And from there, to get a player in the PHPA, we need them to say, uh, sign their licensing waiver form. If they don't sign this form, they cannot be in the game. Now, we've had situations like Carey Price a couple years ago played with the uh, Hamilton Bulldogs and led them to the Calder Cup. And we also this year here in Vancouver, we had uh, Cody Hodson, who was actually playing with the Manitoba Moose. And people assume because they're playing with these AHL teams that they can uh, then sign a deal and be automatically in the game. Well, they were on amateur tryout contracts, and basically they're not getting paid to play. It allows them to have the chance to go back to junior, because as soon as they play in a pro game, they can't go back to junior. That's the agreement that they have in place. Also, anybody coming out of college, as soon as they play, they will be a pro, but they still need to sign their waiver. So all these guys that are top prospects that play at the end of the year, they're not um, going to count because they haven't signed their PHPA waiver form. So 
anybody that's on an amateur tryout contract, so if you see a player and it says, you know, he's on an amateur tryout contract, basically it, it means nothing to us. We can't use him until either the next year when he signs his waiver form, or if he should go to the NHL and play a shift, then we can use him. So this is basically the rules we follow. Uh, a lot of it is just tracking who's doing what and, and what players are playing. Um, as, you, as we also have about 180 guys that we're waiting to sign these waiver forms, we're going to be turning around and seeing if any of them end up in the NHL, even for one game, they would automatically we'd start building them to put them in the roster update. So that's just an overview of how we have to deal with the different players and, and how we manage to get them in the roster update. Uh, and from there, um, like I said, we're trying to do these every two weeks every two weeks and we're going to be working on um, uh, implementing some, uh, Alan Quinto is going to be implementing some uh, forum uh, threads that will allow you just to give some feedback in general chat about the different rosters uh, and that way if you have any questions you can put it up there and we can try and answer some if, if we uh, see anything that stands out. Uh, that's it for now. Uh, look out for the next roster update. <laughs> roster update. Thanks. Bye.